All right, all right, all right. Hey, hey everyone. Hello. Hey, James. Hey, Tatiana. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Julia. Hello, everyone. Uh, people, please tell us in the chat whether you can see us, whether you can hear us. Just tell us whether you can see us, whether you can hear us. Okay, we do. Awesome, awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Hey, everyone. While everyone is joining, please tell us in the chat, where are you right now? So say hi from New York, hi from London, hi from Warsaw, hi from Kiev. Hi, yeah, I see Kiev. Hey, South hi. Africa. Hi. hi, Toronto. Hey, New hey, York hi. City. Hi. Oh, hi. hello, Phoenix. Hello. Hello, Lviv. Hello, Thailand. Hello, Kiev. Wow. Again, hello, London. Oh, my God. It's so awesome. You know, while everyone is joining, I just want to say that, I, Marina, I love the fact that people, you know, just spend uh, 20 or 30 minutes of their time uh, with us to find out and figure out how to set up uh, LinkedIn outreach and uh, the whole outreach system to generate more and more leads. We're going to start Bye. just in two minutes. But before that, Marina, how are things going? Yeah, everything is great. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here today and have this session with you today. Um, and I actually see these uh, people joining and from everywhere, which is amazing. And I want to thank everyone who already joined or will join us today. Um, it's quite a busy time of the year. Holidays are coming uh, for many of uh, us. It's the end of the business year. The year is ended. So uh, everyone is pretty busy. But I really thank everyone who found this uh, time to be with us today, and hopefully it's going to be a um, useful time spent. Yeah, uh, people who are seeing us right now, who will see and who will join this webinar, and people who will see this in the recording. Hey, hey to you in the future. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we will be sharing this uh, um, recording, right? Yes. Should we? I think so. Yeah, right. Sure. Okay, if people say yes, we're going to share this recording. Perfect. So, okay, let's start. While Marina is sharing her, her slides, let me do a quick, quick introduction. So my name is Ilya, and Marina is a co-owner and co-founder of the lead generation agency called Spark Lead. And they help, you know, lots of B2B brands with a lead generation. They supply leads to them directly. And the thing is that, we all know that lead generation is not an easy thing, right? You need to do a lot of stuff. You need to warm up emails. You need to set up LinkedIn accounts. You need to do this and that and so on and so forth. You need to prepare messages, prepare your ICPs. There are lots of, lots of, lots of things that you need to do. And we know that it's, you know, it's a hell. So we decided at Expanded that we need to talk to some people who already mastered this, people who already doing this not only for themselves, but also for other companies and showing really great results. That's why we decided to talk to one, like top 1% of LinkedIn and email lead generation specialists and professionals. And that's why we today talk to Marina, um, the, the expert in lead generation, and she today will share her own approach to the lead generation, how they help their clients with the real examples and the real use cases. So please, if you have any questions, ask them in the Q&A section, because after this quick presentation, we'll, like Marina will be answering all your questions. So please don't ask them in the chat, but ask them in the Q&A section, okay? So thanks a lot. And Marina, let's get it started. Right. Thank you very much. And I take it as a compliment uh, when you say mastering. Um, I, I really want to believe that, but outreach is a process and, you know, you need to try and test in order to find your perfect strategy. Um, I will be talking today about our experience at Sparkly, how we do outreach for ourselves, for our clients, some practices that we use uh, hopefully will be relevant to some of our uh, participants uh, today in a call. So um, there is a few intro slides. Um, I think a lot of people know you already. Um, maybe something else that you would like to add here. Uh, no, let's let's get started. Sure. sure. So uh, just a few things about me uh, for those who 
see me first time and have heard of me. Um, my name is Marina. I'm currently managing Sparkleads operations and Sparkleads team. I'm also mentoring um, startups at Yep Incubator. Um, my experience goes back to different industries, um, including FMCG, mobile as a service, ser uh, software as a service. And currently we are doing, um, like I'm on the other side, not on the client side, but on the side um, of the agency that uh, helps um, helps to find the perfect growth strategy when it comes to lead gen. And um, today I will be talking about our experience for sure, but there are two things I think that I would um, like to emphasize. The first is identifying your ICP. So basically we'll be talking about the process in general, but um, ICP is one of the most thing and defining it, um, optimizing it. So that's gonna be one thing. And another thing is gonna be actual prep process. Um, when you have your ICP ready, how to actually start doing something, you know, what can be, um, what, what can be helpful there. Uh, and of course, as you mentioned, we're going to have a Q&A. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so let's start with the um, outbound. I don't think we need like a definition of what it is, but it would be nice to, to think about the place of outbound strategy or approach in, a genre, um, in an overall region strategy. So from my experience and from our agency experience, uh, we usually uh, know that companies do something in terms of the lead chain, and it um, in the most cases uh, goes to inbound strategy. So they try something um, that drives leads to their website, including some collaterals, content, pay campaigns. And, um, you know, there is always a question, do we need an outbound or when should we uh, launch an outbound for, um, you know, for what type of the businesses use case it is relevant. I do believe this is not uh, like for everybody or for each, any stage of the business development. Because for example, if you are targeting smaller companies, some SMBs, so um, putting your dollars or your money behind the efforts to launch and run the outbound campaigns might be inefficient in this case. Um, and here I have a cost of an outbound lead that uh, we have as a reference from our experience. So depending on the industry, on the client, on the use case, it's definitely varies, but the range could be from 800 to um, 1500 per appointment or per lead. So basically, that's it's quite. It seems a lot uh, for people who are you know thinking to do it. And again, if it's uh, if the business is um, aiming to attract smaller companies, maybe that's not the right way to do. But when we're talking about the companies that are targeting corporate enterprise companies, where you know the average contract value or you know, the expected contract value um, definitely uh, covers this cost. That's probably something that worth considering. And, um, you know, I personally believe that uh, having an outbound as a part of the lead gen strategy mix only strengthens your uh, chances, you know, to get to the results faster um, versus, you know, um, following only one strategy. And um, apart from cost, which is important, there are other things that you know might be a constraints for a lot of businesses. And um, that's something what we hear from our clients, like what, what, what else could go wrong apart from that it's, it's costly. So um, lack of expertise regarding the research, where should we get the data? Mm, GDPR compliant um, data, um, again, company set up, what would be the ideal sales cadence, ideal um, in terms of the messaging uh, that would be, uh, should we use some AI tools or write everything, you know, by human or uh, to which extent we should personalize the messaging, the content. So there is a lot of things to consider. And what we face um, that some of the companies that try, um, they find, they, they, um, 
they saw some constraints and they stopped a drop line there and started uh, the outbound. So they are really skeptical about uh, some stuff. But, um, you know, being on an agency side and doing this as a day-to-day -day job, um, I'd like to highlight that there is a lot of value for the businesses there. So when we're talking about having an outbound as a part of your lead strategy mix, that's um, a very right way to target the companies that actually are on your radar. So for example, if you're on that level that you evaluate your total addressable market, maybe define some wish list, power list, I don't know, the companies that um, you would like to be your clients, that then uh, having more personalized approach versus general targeting is definitely a value for you. Um, another thing is that uh, having, uh, like doing outbound, um, you don't, for, for this, you don't need to have a dedicated marketing team. So your sales can do that. Your BDRs can do that as well. Um, and that gives you more, it makes you more independent uh, within this process. And um, last but not the least thing is having a predictable pipeline for that's what, what is really important to sales, you know, that they, they know that they're going to have the pipeline that they can convert into the deals. Um, and with the outbound, you have that predictability, which is, uh, which is really, you know, really cool. So um, at this point, um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's imagine that we all agree that outbound is a, you know, great strategy moving forward. And, um, what would be the ideal process or what is our process? Um, our process currently looks like this. Uh, so that's, um, the flow that we follow to run outreach for ourselves and as well for our client. Um, it's not something absolutely new. I believe many of you already use this or know this or saw this somewhere else. Um, it is important, you know, to utilize it to the most, I would say. So the first step is um, is obvious. It's about ICP. It's about setting up your um, ideal customer profile and thinking who are those companies, um, but not only to the level of some basic uh, parameters like geography, um, company size and so on and so forth, but also uh, building like a matrix or a map. And I will tell how, how we do it um, just in a while, um, you know, to uh, get all of the pains and also how you or your product or your service can meet those uh, pains uh, of your potential clients. Um, another one and pretty, pretty important is research and data enrichment. And at this stage, um, that's about actually transforming your ICP into exact contact leads, a list that gonna be uploaded to your sales cadence or will be used by your sales to the manual outreach. There are different options there. Um, followed by content creation part um, as well, super important. Um, they can actually um, go simultaneously, um, but like in, in order to shorten um, prep time. And, and, and that's actually what we do uh, in Sparklead. We usually run those two things uh, in parallel. And on the content creation level, it's about um, optimizing the, the messages, but also personalizing it to, um, to the extent that is possible for each ACP. Um, the next one would be channel setup. Um, here we are talking about the channels that you're going to be using for us. It's two main channels, email and LinkedIn. So when it comes to email, it's starting with fine tuning your LinkedIn profile. So making sure it looks attractive, it meets some basic, basic requirements in terms of the visibility, and then making some um, additional automation for the tools that you're going to be using to set up those campaigns. And for the emails, it's warming up the, um, creating domain. If you just if you do that, we do that, and warming up your mailboxes, uh, setting up all the necessary tool, making sure you have Calendly, HubSpot links, whatever is required for the process, and actually running uh, the campaign. 
Um, and here it's also important to say that um, analysis and reporting is a part of this process. That's not something that just happens, um, I don't know, at the end of the quarter or uh, at the end of the month. It's the day by day process that we do um, using CRAM um, you know, in order for us to see where we can optimize as we, as we run the campaign. So that would be the flow. Um, the general one, and um, I'd like to talk more about each of these um, these stages now. When it comes to ICP, I believe defining your ICP is that vital and important as like knowing your allergies. If you know to to make it uh, really really personal, so that is a very crucial um, point um, in this process. And here is why. So what we do uh, on this level, um, we definitely talk to our clients, understand their business, understand uh, uh, their desirable clients, um, put it on paper, but um, also make it like a matrix where we map their um, ICP. Uh, the pain that they have with, with the value prop that the clients offers and also some pieces of content or some additional things that they already created or should create for those specific ICPs. Because we what we see in the um, in the process that it is important not so, in many cases for many uh, products, specifically technologically complex products, it's important to have some um, supporting collaterals that can be, you know, explaining the solution, for example, if it's a vertical solution or um, if it's, you know, tailored to some specific niche, that would be really helpful. So we're trying to create like, you know, a matrix of the ICPs, pains, value probe, and already existing or preferable content that we've been using during this period of, uh, of the campaign or, or all of the process um, in general. And uh, by having that, we can, okay, we have something here. Mm. Yeah, the, the real thing is that Marina is a really huge expert when it comes to lead generation. And we thought, I talked to Marina and said, okay, what can we offer to, to people? What can we do something cooler? How can we make this webinar even better? And we thought, what if Marina, um, you know, has with three of you, will have a 30 minutes or yeah, 30 minutes call to A, go through your um, lead generation processes, understand how things are going and take a look at, okay, what to improve, et cetera, et cetera, and give her feedback about your lead generation. And the thing is that we decided, okay, in this case, what you need to do to be among those three people who will get this, you will need to just connect with Marina on LinkedIn and say the password. And in 20 minutes, we'll say the password so just connect with Ms. Marina on LinkedIn. We'll send all the links. Just you connect with her and say, hey, I came from webinar with Xpondi. Here is the password. So if you are lucky enough, uh, Marina will have a 30 minutes call with you and we'll go through your uh, lead generation process and take a look at how things, uh, how to make this better, how to do this better, et cetera, et cetera. So in 20 minutes, we'll share the code and just take this password Go to LinkedIn, connect with Marina, say this password to say that you're from the webinar and boom, you can get a free consultation. Wow, this is great. Um, I will be happy to have that consultation or this session with um, anyone interested. Yeah, so um, participate and we'll be happy to, to talk to you afterwards after the webinar. <laughs> So um, going back to our topic, so we would, you know, um, we have, yeah, so the ICP, when you have your ICP ready and we recommend to have it, you know, an extended document, as I just mentioned, then we uh, move to the next stage, which is research and, you know, actually pulling the data. So here I have an example, just like, you know, to make it more practical uh, with the real case that it was um, not very, uh, th this actually a very recent case. Um, the client is in software development. It's a mid-sized company, um, around 200 employees. Uh, they work with container technology. So that's um, IT technology and they headquartered in Germany. In Germany, sorry. Um, so the challenge and the goal for this 
this client was to generate prospects um, and to convert them to the participants of the on-site event. And um, that's just like, the uh, basic when we usually start um, start from and what happened next. So first thing in terms of the research is to evaluate the audience. Um, you know how long, how how big is uh, how big is this audience? Uh, and for this specific case, uh, what we did we used two major source. Um, so the as the company operates in um, software development, the audience uh, mostly sits in LinkedIn, and we know it, and it's really active. So for us, it was source number one. And um, another supporting source that we use for that was Clutch, um, which actually gives also a very uh, good overview for this specific uh, use case. Uh, basically, in terms of the uh, ICP, there were a few tiers. Um, the first one, and so that's a desirable um, buyer for this company, are enterprises of different verticals. And we have few in particular that actually um, more of a interested for this client, which is telco, finance, uh, healthcare, e-commerce. So the companies are of corporate size, starting 200 of employees. And considering that this event is on site, uh, what is important and, uh, to evaluate is the geo, because um, the event was um, in Germany. So the DAC region is um, obviously a first priority to consider, but also uh, we um, added few more closest regions, uh, which is really um, which is really convenient to commute to the event and uh, added those uh, people and those companies to the outreach. Uh, there were a few other tiers of the companies, which were tier two, tier three, system integrators, IT service and consulting firms and software development firms and startups. So at the very beginning, you know, top of top of the research, um, the market seems huge. It's 15, um, it, it's 15K of the companies, um, a lot, uh, a lot of work to do. And for that project, we had, um, I think three or uh, slightly more than three months uh, to, uh, to prepare the audience to do the outreach and to generate the required number of the meetings during the event. So what happened next? Uh, that's a really practical thing because uh, we, uh, when we consult uh, uh, some smaller companies who never did to the um, uh, outreach before, they use okay. So where do we get this data? Um, that really depends. So the stop number one, I think the most famous one is LinkedIn and Sales Navigator, which helps you work with the data really easy using the filters. Uh, so that's um, something that anyone can do without any specific needs or knowledge of the tools. So you basically filter anything you need uh, on your ICP. In this case, some some very uh, general parameters like headcount, headquarters, location, industry, um, and you understand how many of exact people or contacts of that uh, 15K companies we can uh, collect out of this. Uh, but also it is important to use some um, not that obvious filters um, whenever you can. Um, meaning, for example, um, specific job titles, uh, connections. We, there is um, this cool filter connections off. So you can use, um, you can also um, pull the data of connection of some specific people that you know. And in this case, our client is a sort of an influencer within this technology. So he has a very cool data. Um, uh, audience of the context that we also was uh, considered for uh, this use case. And uh, once you see your um, audience in terms of the context, uh, what we recommend to do, and this is like a very important step for us, we extract this data um, really to some um, file, CSV file or Excel file using Phantom Buster, which is one of the options available, um, super easy to use, and I will explain why. So whenever you have this huge list of the contacts, uh, we what we would do next, we would do another set of tiering this content, uh, top contacts to, um, let's say, the most uh, to, to some of the priorities, uh, the companies with the most um, decision makers that were available for us to extract, 
would be uh, higher tiers. Uh, and for those, we would do some manual research, custom research, specifically on a level of this content. So we would go uh, either manual Hey guys, can you please tell us in the chat whether you can see us, whether you can hear us? I guess we lost Marina. No, yeah, well, I guess we lost Marina. Okay, no worries. Give me just one second. Um, let me just double check whether everything is fine or not. Just a second. So uh, while, while we are, okay. All right, sorry, something happened, just. Uh... All good, all good, no worries, no worries. So uh, yeah, uh, what we do here, we try to find these um, triggers that can be used for personalization on the level of context. And that we use only for higher tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three max. And for all of the rest of the content, uh, we're gonna be using some more uh, generic uh, value prop based on their pains um, as per their job role. So that's another thing that is important here. What else uh, I'd like to share here? So uh, for the companies that has some really strong digital footprint, LinkedIn, uh, these types of tools is, uh, is amazing to use. For some traditional um, industries like our recent case with solar panel um, distributor and developer, um, not that obvious that you know their audience are using LinkedIn or are there. So we absolutely will source some um, specific um, data uh, for that. Um, for example, some governmental programs um, in, in uh, desired markets, um, they, they usually have the open data with the list of the companies that are uh, participating in the program, which can be, you know, pulled out and also the, um, for example, some specific events where you can um, negotiate for participant list or, you know, uh, get them um, somehow to add to your audience. And once you have that, you know, once your 15K of companies transform into the list of the uh, contacts and you already tier them um, as you see needed to your use case, then um, you get all of the data which is missing. And for that, there are like a lot of uh, tools on the market. We prefer using Singlist uh, for many cases. And, um, but there are like a lot, uh, many more uh, there to be used as well. So just, you know, a short summary here uh, for that part of um, this presentation, the ICP is uh, super important and, you know, on top of uh, um, just considering some basic uh, points like location, position, industry, and so on and so forth. Um, calculate your time, see how many companies are there and try to narrow it down. And that's actually really important because the more specific you're targeting and your messaging would be the uh, shorter time you would need to get uh, the first results. And that's um, um, always very, very important. Uh, so for uh, ICP, uh, transforming ACP into database. Uh, we have a few points here. That's actually what I already uh, talked about. So we just put it on the slides. Maybe someone would like to use it. Um, so we would be sharing this, I think, uh, as well uh, during the, uh, um, on top of the recording. I, I won't uh, stop on this. Um, in terms of the tool set, so basically what we use in our um, in our daily job is a lot a lot of, uh, is a lot of tools and actually we believe the data is a key there uh, with all of the marketing technology available on the market you can do much better and much efficiently uh, what you know previously even I don't know six months ago was 
meant to be um, manually. So as I mentioned for research, uh, we use a navigator, Crunchbase, Clutch, all of the other listing platforms like G2. Uh, so there might be you know, uh, any others depending on the use case. For um, campaign design, it can be, again, Sales Navigator, Phantom Buster, Octopus, Sales IQ, and Seamless. Um, but, but there are a lot of uh, similar uh, tools on the market. And um, in terms of the campaign, when we have the ICP in place and when we have the contact list for that based uh, on that ICP, um, this is the most fun part. We actually start uh, doing the outreach. What we use in our job, um, we use, you know, um, semi-automated approach. So we use some tools, but we also uh, manage a lot uh, manually. And in terms of the tools, our favorite ones and loved ones are Replyio, Expandi, and Impostum. That's the tools that we currently using. Um, Reply is used mostly for email automation, um, which it has really cool um, and, and easy interface uh, and helps you to set up everything uh, in minutes and also gives you a very cool uh, dashboard uh, in terms of analytics and stuff. Um, Expandi is a loud one for LinkedIn and actually we're testing it right now uh, to understand the full capabilities of the tool, but loving it so far. And we use um, Impasto, which is which do um, similar um, job to the previous tools, but um, but but has some features that also um, can be can be can be great for for some clients. So when we're talking about the outreach and basically, you know, where do we outreach? We use two major channels, and that's not not a surprise that these are email and LinkedIn. Um, in terms of the mix, uh, we, we use this for, in any case, for all the clients and every, uh, obviously each of them has its um, strong, um, has its strengths and weaknesses. And in terms of um, the mix, we see that um, for some companies and for some use cases, LinkedIn is definitely a driving channel to um, drive meetings or book demos or anything like that. And it's actually interesting that for many traditional industries, like uh, in our cases, it is uh, furniture manufacturing, uh, renewable energy, um, and similar. Um, LinkedIn works really well. We were skeptical skeptical about it um, at the beginning, you know, just not sure whether people sit there and use it as a professional network, but. Um, it turned out to be a, a very, very productive um, channel for us in terms of the uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, uh, a lot, e even with the automations and very uh, accurate setups, it gives you uh, an opportunity to reach people, I would say, in a slightly lower uh, scale than email can. So with email and warmed up uh, mailboxes, you can you can do great send outs. Um, but in terms of the response rate, so uh, we saw that uh, we can see that LinkedIn worked works better. So it gives better conversion rate versus email. Again, that, that depends. It, it might be different based on what, what is your um, what is your RCP, what is your geo and, and stuff like this. But to give you some, you know, some references to uh, in, for these channels, um, what I would like to highlight that, for example, this, these are the numbers for the uh, first uh, first launch campaign. In email in LinkedIn by Sparkly, uh, meaning before optimization and you know further improvements. So in email, um, we see in our benchmark uh, open rate is thirty nine percent. So everything is below is immediately um, improving to reach at least that uh, benchmark. And in terms of conversion rates, it's one point five percent currently. And um, for LinkedIn, the acceptance rate is 36% and the conversion rate is 3.5%, which is so which is big versus emails. Um, again, this is not like you know um 
typical for each and every case, but it's the benchmark we use just to evaluate whether, you know, some general parameters works well. And despite, you know, whether we have the results which are below the benchmarks or higher the benchmarks, we do the improvements in any case to, to reach the max uh, possible for, uh, for, the, for, for, for some specific clients or the, some specific cases. There are a few things that I'd like to highlight here. I think this is um, just like, you know, a summary of what um, what I already uh, been showing you today. Um, to my, for me, there are three major things that I would like to uh, highlight that ICP and its optimization is super important. And starting, um, it's something that should be like a live document and should be changed throughout the process. So the um, our typical outreach uh, lasts not less than three months. So three months is a minimum. Um, and we change the ICP, I, I, I think at least two or three times during this period of time. So it's, it should be a work in progress document. Another thing is data. So pulling data and gathering the data that is available and that can reflect and cover the prospect pay, pain points is essential. Um, we, you know, still use a lot of manual tool, uh, manual work on that stage and believe that, you know, you cannot automate it, you know, 100% yet to, to make it, to, to make personalization, um, um, to work uh, that to make personal personalization work. So this is a combination of the tools and your, your, you know, your job. And another thing, and I would say this is might be uh, a success factor uh, for the outreach. So to ensure uh, outreach, um, to ensure the outreach, um, you should consider quality of the interactions. You should consider quantity of the interaction and the frequency. And I think it's uh, like um, all of the parts of one equation. Uh, meaning that is really a process. And when uh, we see that, you know. Um, companies do try um, launch the outreach, do it for one month, don't see the results, and say it doesn't work. It might not work in a month. In many cases, it will, and it will bring you some leads or um, appointments or whatever. Um, but it might not. So my only advice here is keep it consistent, uh, research and messages and repeat, make it a process and uh, you will see the results there. I think this is pretty much it in terms of, you know, the information that I wanted to share, uh, but I hope that we have some questions uh, to answer. First of all, yes, we do have the questions, but first of all, I see that people are asking in the chat that I'm yeah. going to share this presentation and the recording of the video. So my thing is, my, my question is, Let's let's do this, please yeah. in the chat. Tell us, like yes or no. Yes, it means we'll send you the recording. No, it means no. Okay, so please in the chat right now, say yes or no. It's simple as it is. So I see yes, 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 yes. yes. Zero no's actually. So yes. Okay, uh, Marina, are you okay if we share this presentation? Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Another thing is that we do have a few questions. We do have a few questions, but mm -hmm. I want to reward those people who, who are still with us after, okay, almost 40 minutes of this, of this webinar. So the thing is that first of all, after this presentation, we'll send you the recording and the, uh, uh, after this webinar, we'll send you the recording and the deck with the few valuable links in the email. So please wait for the follow up. The second one, um, before we come to the Q&A section, Marina, um, do you remember that we, we said that we're going to reward uh, pe some people with the free consultation from, from right. you? Right, yeah. So, yeah. And the thing is, that, yeah. I think it's time, oh, just a sec. Okay, it's, yeah, it's here. So um, the thing is that what you need to do is go on the LinkedIn, connect with Marina and say, Hi, I'm from the webinar. Here is the password. And the password sparks Pondy. So here is the password. Just copy and paste it and 
you, if you're lucky and if you're among the first, you know, not the first, if you're among three people, you will get a free consultation. So Marina will go and take a look at your outbound processes right now, whether it makes sense to run them, whether it's uh, like what, what what to do, how to make it better, what, where's, where are some, you know, places and spaces to improve it, et cetera, et cetera. So again, one more time, I just shared with you the link to the LinkedIn account. Just go to this LinkedIn account connect with Marina and in your connection message, or once Marina accepts your connection message, just say, hey, I came from the webinar. Here is the password. And the password is SparksPundy. Do you take a, take a look at this password? Just copy this, paste it, and say, hey, I need a free consultation. And if you're lucky, Marina will do a free consultation for you. Okay? I'm super excited. Can we, can we make the free consultation not for three people, but for five? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 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 So now if you're lucky among not three people, but five people, you will get a free consultation. So, okay. Awesome. Awesome. So there are a few, one more time, again, connect, say the password, boom. Now we do yeah. have a few questions from the audience. And um, the, the, the first question is, uh, how do you get buyer intent data mm -hmm. in order to to make sure and understand that you are reaching out to those people at the right time. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That's question. the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for buyer intent data, um, again, that would depend on uh, on the client uh, and on its industry. Um, so for um, a lot of tech companies that uh, sell products, uh, we use ZoomInfo as a tool that uh, provides you with um, intense uh, and uh, different scoops and use that can be really helpful. Um, but in some cases, we do it as a manual research. So we can... Um, you know, we can do manual research on a person, on a company when when it's, you know, just like you need we need it right here, right now. But when we are talking about, you know, longer strategy and um, more of a account based approach then um and that's a, a super um a, a super common case we use a tool called influtu so for uh that i will be sharing this tool as well for those who never heard of it um that tool um actually allows you to target some specific people for some uh, some period of time, not less than one month. Again, number of people that you're interested in. Uh, and they will be, the tool will be showing these content, uh, some pieces of content. In, you couldn't say it's a net. It's more of like, you know, um, something that, uh, preferably third parties wrote about you or some general banners about you without any call to action. And uh, the tool will show you and we will be showing you as well uh, the reaction uh, of these contacts. So whether they are uh, clicking, uh, liking, seeing this at the first part. And the tool also helps to identify the contact, con uh, the contact um, who sees the right amount, who has the right amount of suppression as a hot lead and it identified so the time is now to contact that lead. Uh, you can, you know, it, it actually works really well for some bigger accounts um, and you can have like, you can see that you can upload as many contacts as you want. Uh, so uh, you can, whenever you uh, don't have the right strategy or not sure you know how to approach, that would be a really good tool just to see what these contacts react into most likely, some general stuff, some product stuff, something that, you know, are more of a soft leadership um, and that could give you some hints how to how to approach uh, those accounts. Yeah, that's a really great strategy when it comes to Influ2. This is actually the tool designed for the account-based marketing. Yeah. And if your average size is pretty high and pretty huge and yeah, pretty big, it makes sense to go with that tool. I, I, I can uh, say that for sure. Uh, it's called Influ2. I see that some people are asking mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the questions. Um, Influ2. Yes. Yeah. So if this is the tool. That take a look at that. But it will work only for those who have a really big average deal size. Mm -hmm. If not, I, I guess that I see already people uh, shared that in the chat that they're, you know, 
in the sales navigator filters, in the Apollo tool filters, in there are so many different you know, platforms that are designed to find potential leads, you can use different buyer intent filters. For example, on, on LinkedIn, you can reach out to people who are hiring right now, right? Or you can yeah. reach out to people who are a part of a specific group on LinkedIn, which is a really, really cool, cool thing. So for example, um, you're the you're the SEO agency about um, and you want to reach out to uh, to companies who are hi- to startups who are hiring right now for the SEO. Just reach out to those who are hiring right now for the SEO. You you will get much bigger results with that. You know this is the mm-hmm. type of the buyer intent things that you can get again with the with the bigger accounts. I do agree that Flow Two is a really really great yeah. thing. The another question is what is your key differentiation part uh, like a part of other uh, legion agencies at uh, Sparkly so what do you do differently how do you feel that okay what do you feel when it comes to okay here is the usual outbound flow yeah but here is how we make it different mm-hmm. um I would say that we evaluate the client case um you know from a complex point of view. So we do not just automate emails or automate LinkedIn. We would offer you some strategy um, that is might be you know out of scope to just this. And we would uh, offer you, for example, to add social selling, meaning we would be responsible for your LinkedIn profile, for boosting um, your LinkedIn profile, for creating some content, for following the right people commenting on your behalf, or uh, adding some general marketing stuff like paid campaigns and so on and so forth. So we can add some other marketing um, stuff to your strategy, uh, which is out of scope to what we just talked about, LinkedIn and email and some cadences, which is set, uh, set up. So that is uh, that is one thing. Uh, but that's also another important thing, what we do and how we're different. Uh, we do this research and we evaluate your audience that could be potential for us. And if we understand that for, I don't know, any reason we we cannot find it or it's too so complex or I don't know, whatever, we would tell you right away. So we would be not the right people that, you know, to, to take your case and to take it. This is not just like for uh, sign you at any, uh, at any price, no. Um, it's just um, a, a fair evaluation at the very beginning before any uh, contracts are signed. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. There are a few more questions. Uh, Marina, do you recommend to combine LinkedIn and email outreach? Um, or you would say you should stick with only one channel? Absolutely recommend combining. Uh, and again, um, here is just the only way, you know, how to do it, because uh, the right approach is when you uh, simultaneously one day you send um, email and then you connect to a person in LinkedIn and you do the simultaneous flow or you uh, send an email, then connect in a few days or the, the other way around and do it, you know, in a di- with a different um with, with using the different time uh, slots, that's the only thing. But definitely, uh, combination works. And for people, for example, um, you can just have more data and evaluate. You you can see whether people open it, or uh, whether they open. You can then um, change your LinkedIn message to the next one. So like I see open my email and, and so on and so forth. So be, um, as much, uh, get as much data, um, as possible on the channel performance. So yeah, combine. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, another question is, um, uh, the question is, I notice Squarespace on your list of tools. How do you incorporate that into your lead gen process? Yeah, so we use it on a level of the data, um, uh, data research and collection. Um, Like I probably wouldn't be the right person to tell you exactly about this tool because I I, I do not use it personally uh, for quite a lot of time, Uh, but I can just like follow up with you if you really interested in see how, you know, it can be beneficial um, afterwards. Uh, We can send you just this follow up. Yeah, okay. Another question is, it's already from the chat. I, I see your sure. questions in the Q&A, so people don't, like, no worries. I'll ask all of your questions. Another question is, um, I'm absolutely thrilled about launching my lead gen agency, specifically yeah. focused on finding 
high quality leads for service-based software development companies. I'm curious though, how challenging is to excel in providing lead generation services for software companies? I'm eager to learn and grow. And I'm wondering if there is an opportunity for mentorship from both of you experts. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think about that? What, 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 like when it comes to the software development companies, does it make sense like to go with outbound for, for this specific audience? That's a very good question. Uh, I love that question. And um, like in terms of the Spark lead, um, at some point when we just started our own outreach uh, for ourselves, uh, we targeted those type of the companies. But when we run a few interviews and we actually did a very uh, cool research with them, we understand that this regular flow or cadence doesn't work. So it, it's it's always something very specific that it's super hard to scale. It's it's then going to be just, you know, an outsourcing a person who would be just uh, an extension to their team uh, and simply doing um, the flow uh, case by case. So uh, for us, uh, for, as, as an agency, we do not um, have that uh, type of the companies as a ICP because uh, we do not, and, and we actually don't have any software development company as a client um, simply because we do not believe that, you know, this um, this sort of approach will work for them. And that's what they told us already uh, themselves. Uh, sorry, can hear you. Yes. Um, the, another question is, early in this deck, uh, the customer acquisition cost of the appointment at, was at 800 to 1500. We are called mm -hmm. email outreach. Seems a bit high. Please mm -hmm. clarify service offering what industry what deal value is this number for mm -hmm. so this number is for um SaaS product technological product um uh, for example crm platform is one of an example Cybersecurity uh solution is another example uh but you should consider that this cost includes everything it's just not like uh the cost of setting up an email but it's all uh everything that uh, we as an agency provide. So it's people, it's, um, again, marketing technology, it's setups, so it's everything. No other cost is there. Uh, but it's for those types of the companies. Uh, they usually um, corporate or enterprise um, level companies, so bigger ones, I would say. Okay, okay. We are running out of time, so I'll ask a few more questions. So why, um, so uh, yeah, that's the question from Hans George. And the question is, uh, please explain more about the messages. What is a typical focus? So mm -hmm. what is your typical and the best template that you are sending? And usually it works. I understand that in some cases it might not work, but still, uh, mm -hmm. what is your ideal cold email, aka LinkedIn message and the sequence can you share some some tricks or growth hacks over there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So again, I think I wouldn't be really um, original here. So it, it depends which message because usually the say the email cadence uh, includes not one but like three, five, ten in some cases. Uh, but again, uh, in order to make it catchy, um, the subject line matters, uh, using their name matters, using uh, something about them personally matters. For example, uh, like for many, uh, for many companies and for many clients, we use not that formal way of communication and we see that works using some uh, emojis, uh, using more informal uh, language uh, works, but also what is a super, Cool, um, in terms of getting a response, no matter what uh, positive or negative is asking question, asking direct question, not being afraid to ask the question. Um, and usually that triggers an answer, just not uh, to make it make it a little bit provocative at some point. Um, that that really works for us. Yeah, okay, okay, awesome. We have the place only for one question. And guys, if you have any questions, please ask them right now. I see that there are a few already in the Q&A section, but still we only have place for one question. So, okay. Yeah. So, okay. The question is, do you have set parameters for clients? What if a company is fairly new and sort of figuring things out? Is that a deal breaker for you? And I guess that I will rephrase this question mm -hmm. to more like, when does it make sense to go with outbound? Uh, because like I'll be super honest with you. Whenever yeah. we say that okay, outbound is pretty cool, 
we say, yes, it's pretty cool, but not for everyone. If you have a B2C product, I'm not sure that is a really great uh, great thing for you. If uh, if your average deal size is pretty, pretty low, it doesn't make sense to go with mm -hmm. outbound. If you need to go on a huge scale uh, with a huge profitability, but you actually need the scale, that also means that probably outbound is not for you. Um, Marina, do you have any more suggestions of like when it's better to go with outbound with or without agency and when it's better not to even try go there? Mm -hmm. I would agree with everything that you just mentioned. So all of those no go points, I think when it's important, when it's makes sense to, to go whenever you um, even, you know, you may not uh, do the uh, outbound yet, but you already did some um, something in terms of the um, lead generation. Uh, and maybe when your strategy is more crystallized in terms of the companies or industries or specific, when you have some specific leads, some specific direction or where you want to move, uh, outbound is um, is a is a great way to you know test the approach of more personalized communication. And absolutely true, you you don't need an agency for that um, necessarily. You can do it on your own. And a lot some of our companies, some of our clients, they just uh, use our services to educate their team and they just then cut and do it themselves which is which is fine and and great because um they understand the basic flow and try to implement it uh within their um within their own team uh sorry okay okay awesome thanks a lot thanks everyone who was here with us today, um, again, uh, the recording and the deck, I'll send it uh, during today or tomorrow on your email. Yeah. So please take a look at the follow-ups. Uh, also reach out to Marina if, if you want to win the free consultation. Also, please don't, like if you need to start doing the LinkedIn automation, LinkedIn like, outreach, try Spondy. It's a really, really cool tool. We do have and provide the free um the free trial so here's the link please go try it and start generating leads like during the next seven days it's it's pretty easy as it is so that's basically thanks a lot marina for joining thank us today much. yeah thank you yeah. everyone who was with us have a great rest of the week bye bye thanks thank a lot you.